Where does marine debris come from? Marine debris comes from many different sources and enters the ocean in many ways. Intentional littering and dumping are a big cause of marine debris. Sometimes the trash goes directly into the ocean, like when beachgoers don't pick up after themselves. Or sometimes, marine debris is indirectly generated in a city hundreds of miles from the ocean. When someone litters on the street or parking lot, rainwater can move the trash into storm drains that empty into streams, rivers, and other bodies of water. Or the wind can blow it there. Those rivers and streams can eventually carry the trash to the ocean. Improper or careless waste disposal is another big cause. Have you ever seen an overflowing trash can, but for some reason, people keep putting trash there? Hello, marine debris. Or when someone throws a piece of plastic in the trash, when it should have been recycled. Around the world, many people don't have access to proper waste disposal or recycling, but the trash keeps piling up, and it has to go somewhere. It's not just here on land. Marine debris comes from activities out on the water, too. People on boats sometimes throw their trash overboard, and that's against the law. Or trash can accidentally fall, blow, or wash off vessels into the water. Sometimes fishers lose their fishing gear thanks to storms or passing vessels. Once debris gets to the ocean, it's very difficult to trace the exact source. The bottom line is, marine debris comes from us. Humans are the source, and every single person has the power and the responsibility to prevent it. What can we do about marine debris? A lot of the trash that's in our ocean is plastic. And that marine debris is hurting our environment, economy, and health. The problem will only get worse. Unless we change the way we consume and dispose of products. There are solutions. And together, we can prevent litter from ending up in the ocean. Some people might say, well, I'm just one person, so I can't make a difference. But that's just not true. If each person who creates trash, and that's just about everyone, took action, it would add up to a whole lot of change. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep debris out of the ocean in the first place. You can bring your own shopping bag, drink out of a reusable bottle, and participate in things like a shoreline cleanup. Join a group cleaning up the beach or grab some friends and clean up your street. It's easy. Be more conscious of how many disposable plastic items you're using. And if you do, where are you putting it? In the trash can? Whoops. Or in the recycling bin? So here's the challenge. The next time you finish using a throwaway item, a bag, a bottle, or utensil, answer the question, where is this going? Because ultimately, when you throw stuff away, there really is no away. It has to go somewhere. So keep asking yourself this important question. How will you keep your trash from becoming marine debris? In many ways, plastic is the perfect material. We can make it strong and rigid enough to build spaceships and replace bones, or thin and flexible enough to make shopping bags that weigh as much as a nickel but carry up to eight kilograms. And unlike other materials, plastic doesn't rust or rot. It can last for centuries, even when we only need it to last a few seconds. We make tons of plastic precisely because it's cheap, durable, and yet expendable. But the features of plastic that make it so useful to us have also transformed life in the oceans, where as much as 10% of our discarded plastic, millions of tons per year, ends up. Big pieces of plastic are definitely bad news for marine animals like whales, albatross, and sea turtles, which risk getting tangled in the debris or ingesting large pieces of it. Yet despite the publicity about huge garbage patches in the sea, most of the ocean's plastic isn't big. Our castaway shopping bags and soda bottles get weakened by sunlight and torn apart in the wind and the waves into little bits of plastic confetti. On the micro scale, though, it's still super durable. The microorganisms that decompose ripped up bits of wood and seaweed down into simpler organic compounds can't easily digest plastic. So while the plastic confetti gets broken into smaller pieces, it doesn't go away. It just spreads out over time. Which is why we've found microplastics pretty much everywhere in the oceans, from the Arctic to the Antarctic, and from the seafloor to the surface. Unlike the easy-to-observe impacts of large plastic trash, the effects of microplastics are as subtle and difficult to trace as the fragments themselves. 
The durable fragments can serve as new real estate on which small ocean creatures grow and multiply, or choke slightly larger ocean creatures that think the plastics are food, or attract and collect toxic chemicals which become introduced into the food chain if the particles are eaten, and probably a million other problems we haven't noticed yet, because we've only recently started paying attention to all these microplastics in the oceans. But it's undeniable how much plastic trash we've introduced into marine ecosystems, and the wonderful durability of plastic guarantees it'll be an issue for years to come. It's possible we can decrease further impact by switching to biodegradable plastics, dumping less plastic in the oceans, or cleaning up the patches of sea most strewn with plastic. But until we do, the question is, will the oceans be plastic enough to deal with our favorite material? Come to a place like this, and you'll see loads and loads of rubbish. But it could be the trash you haven't seen that's causing the biggest problems. Those little bright flecks you can see down there are called microplastic. And researchers say this miniature rubbish is causing some major problems. Microplastics can form when bigger bits of plastic break down into smaller bits. They can even break off our clothes when we wash them. But some companies actually make them too. You probably have some microbeads at home right now in your scrubs or shampoos. In fact, scientists reckon there are about 300,000 of them in the average bottle of face scrub. 300,000 in a bottle? Yep, and even some toothpastes have plastic microbeads in them too. Scientists say these microplastics are becoming a really big issue, especially in our oceans. It is a huge problem. So if you look at the amount of plastic in the environment, over 85% of that is microplastic. In case you missed that, he said 85% of plastic in our environment is tiny bits of microplastic. That's really bad news, especially for marine animals, because those little flecks look a lot like food to them. Just imagine sitting down for lunch and munching away only to realise a bunch of what you're eating isn't really food. It's the same colour, the same size, and it looks a whole lot like the regular food you might eat, but it's actually plastic. That's basically what's happening to creatures that see microplastic floating around in our oceans. That plastic can get stuck in their stomach, making it harder for them to digest food. Another big problem is that plastic often has dangerous chemicals in it, and they can seep into the animal's body. This not only causes issues for them, but it can also be a real danger for the animals that eat them, including humans. Unlike other rubbish, microplastic is just too small to get filtered out in water treatment plants like this. So that means they just end up floating straight out to sea. So many people reckon the best way to stop them is just to get rid of them altogether. And in the US, that's exactly what they've decided to do. President Obama signed a bipartisan bill to phase out micro beads. Here in Australia, our two major supermarkets say they won't stock any products with micro beads past the end of 2017. And the government and scientists are looking for ways to tackle the problem too. But for those who still like the idea of having little beads like these to wash your face with, many cosmetics companies are now looking at natural, biodegradable solutions. Things like seeds and other small bits of rough material. There's still a long way to go, but the fight against this almost invisible enemy has well and truly begun.